Imagine you want to build a large building in a city. One of the first things you're going to be asked is how your building will affect local traffic. The city really wants to know whether the surrounding roadways will be able to handle more drivers. To answer this question, planners and engineers came up with a way to measure roadway performance called level of service. However, since adoption of the level of service standard, it has become apparent that it causes some unintended consequences. And maybe there is a better approach. First, let's look at what exactly level of service is. Level of service is the standard way to evaluate road performance in the United States. Generally, planners and engineers determine level of service by dividing the number of cars on a road by the number of cars that it can fit. The result is then expressed as a letter grade to represent how close a road is to meeting its capacity. So, a road with a level of service grade A would look like this, a grade of C would look like this, and an F would look like this. So, how is this method used in policy? Many cities try to avoid situations where level of service might fall below a critical level. For instance, if the traffic generated by a new project is expected to lower a road's level of service from a D to an E, the developer has to pay for expensive roadway improvements or build somewhere else. This may seem reasonable, but level of service policies are a major contributor to urban sprawl because they encourage developers to build on the outskirts where they can easily avoid tipping the level of service. As a result, we end up with cities where everything is far apart and everybody has to drive more to get where they want to go. The irony is that all this extra driving still creates more congestion. So surely, there must be some other way to predict traffic impact that doesn't cause these negative effects. One alternative is to calculate vehicle miles traveled, or VMT, which takes into account not only how many drivers a project might generate, but how far the drivers will have to go. Because shorter trips produce fewer vehicle miles traveled, building in the car-dependent suburbs becomes less attractive to developers. Then, policies that favor buildings with low VMT would result in denser cities that are more walkable, bike-friendly, and accessible by public transit. And unlike level of service, VMT does not encourage extra driving, and therefore has a better chance at curbing traffic congestion. Plus, we can tackle problems other than congestion, such as eliminating greenhouse gas emissions and making roads safer for pedestrians. To sum up, level of service seems to be doing a good job in reducing traffic, but it fails to address the bigger picture of congestion. Level of service only considers the number of cars on the road and how much room is available for them. But it doesn't factor in how our urban environment affects the way we live, and it leads to unintended consequences. Vehicle miles traveled, on the other hand, met similar goals but with fewer headaches, and gives us not only a more reasonable way to measure traffic impact, but a policy tool that builds better cities.